Hey guys, my name is Steve Walter, and today, with the help of my friend, I'm going to show you how you can use a very basic and inexpensive light shaping tool. It's time for our Tuesday Tips. Today, we're talking about this, a reflector, and in this case, specifically, a five-in-one reflector. What does that mean, five-in-one? You get a silver side, a black side, a white side, a gold side, and then on the middle, you get a diffuser, so that's five-in-one, right? It's one item with five different options for modifying your light. Now, sometimes you can get these in a two-in-one, meaning there's usually a silver and a white side, or sometimes you get something that is just one, meaning just it's white or it's black, something like that. So these come in different options and depending upon what fits your needs, you might want to choose one over the other. It's an inexpensive item that will give you a lot of options for changing your light depending upon your lighting situation. Now in the studio today, we have some light that's coming and going, so you might see my exposure shift back and forth. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using some LED lights to kind of help with making sure we have some consistent light. Let me zoom out to show you. Up there you can see I've got two 8x8 LED panels to try and match the color temperature of the light coming in here, and that's a nice hard light source. So when I need to do some reflecting to show you how this works, you can actually see it. Um, because one of the things I'll say first and foremost is that if you don't have some sort of direct light source, these really aren't gonna do too much for you. So that's something to keep in mind. So that's why I've got these LED panels here, but if you see the light shifting, that's what's going on. Let's zoom back in. Okay, so first things first, silver side. Now it's probably pretty straightforward what that's gonna do, right? it's gonna reflect back a lot of light. So silver is what's known as a bit more of a, a specular surface, right? You can see there's really, really bright spots and then some other bright spots and maybe some sort of darker spots, right? But it's gonna kick back the most amount of light. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that whoever you're kicking all that light back to might give you a look like this. It might be a little too much. It might be a little too harsh. So depending upon how much light you need to push back towards someone, this could be a really good option. Or if it's an inanimate object, really that doesn't matter. But if you want something to look more reflective, um, more specular, that's when you would use this surface. Now, one of the other things that's cool about this is that these are bendable, right? You can kind of manipulate their shape a little bit. So if you need just part of that light to go on, or if you want to sort of kind of narrow that shape, you can do that. So you don't have to use the full surface. You can manipulate the size and change the way it's kicking back that light. Next, on the other side, we have black. Now you might say, well, that's not a reflector. Technically, you're right, it's an absorber. Um, but what it's referred to is as a negative fill. So I wanna show you this. So right over here, you can see there is some light coming back. I've got a big bounce board over here and I'm also in a big white room. So this light that's coming in is reflecting back. Now let's say I wanted this portrait to look a little bit more dramatic. I can bring this up. Now, in many cases, you see I have to get it pretty close for it really to take effect, and I can't even see what it's doing, but I'm assuming it's doing its job because what it should be doing is absorbing that light and not pushing it back, so therefore giving me a negative fill. It's removing the fill that's bouncing off of these walls. So that's why you might want to use black, is if you want your edges to really get defined and dark, add some drama, some contrast, that's why you would use this. Next, let's unzip the reflector. Come on, guys. So, inside of this reflector, we have two more surfaces and the middle surface, which we'll talk about last. So what you do is you basically just turn this inside out. So I have a white surface and I have a gold surface. So you can see immediately this gold is very specular, right? Look at that, it's kicking back a lot of warmth. I personally don't use the gold a whole lot, but typically when you'd want to use it is when you already have naturally warm light. And what I mean is like during sunset, golden hour, something like that, because right now you can see that the color temperatures don't match from one side of the subject's face to the other. Now, unless that's specifically something that you're going for, by all means. I don't want to tell you what's artistically right or wrong. I just really want to show you some of the function of this. But you can see what it's doing is it's kicking back a lot of light, and in this case, it's gold. So that's what this side is going to do. The other side is white. Now, this is what's known as a matte surface, right? Um, this is going to kick back some light. This is typically going to be a softer fill or softer bounce. So you can see not as much as our specular side was giving us, but still it's a nice way for us to just push a little bit of light into the shadow side of a portrait. 
Where you'll see this very commonly used is people will bounce it from underneath, right? So if I take it away, you can see what that looks like and then I add it back in here. One of the cautions that I would like to give you though is don't push it too close. Don't push in too much light from underneath. It'll give you this sort of campfire Halloween eerie glow. Again, unless that's what you're going for, you know, that might not be the most ideal portrait, but if you have it from maybe a slight distance and you push back in some light, that can be really nice to fill in shadows. Also to add some nice catch lights in your subject's eyes. So that's where the white side really comes in handy. Another thing that's really cool about using one of these reflectors, whether it be the gold, the silver, or the white side, is that if you don't have a wall around you, and maybe you wanna use a speed light or some other type of light just to bounce off of, you have that. So I could set this up in the middle of a field, bounce a light off of it to come back towards my subject, and now I have a white wall in the middle of nowhere, or a silver wall or a gold wall. So that's another option that you have, is that you don't just have to have available light. I know I mentioned that earlier, is that if you don't have sunlight, you can't really use this. You can, but you just have to make sure you have some type of light source. So that's another tip that I really like using, especially just from above. Putting it above someone, bouncing a speed light up to it so it comes down, that's a great way to get just basic headshots. Last but not least, I wanna talk about the inside of this because that's probably my favorite part of what a five-in-one reflector does. And I don't see enough people utilizing it, so that's why I wanted to share this. I'm gonna unzip again. So we have this, this is a diffuser. Now, it's a very thin, transparent surface and it's gonna allow some light through. Depending upon the reflector that you get, it might block a half a stop of light, a full stop of light. I have a few different options. And you can even get things like, uh, this is almost kind of like tracing paper, but this is gonna be a little bit more color balanced to match daylight. So depending upon what you're using, it could even be a, a white bed sheet, a very thin white bed sheet, and that will act as a diffuser. And the whole idea behind the diffuser is to soften the light that is coming towards your subject. So right now, I have pretty hard light coming in. And if I place this on the opposite side, you can see what that does. Now, it's making it darker, sure, but what it's also doing is it's softening it. So here it is with, here it is without. And one other thing is the closer I get this to my subject, the softer that light becomes because now my light source, which is this diffuser, is closer to my subject. The closer the light, the softer the light. So if I start moving this away, it's gonna get a little bit harder. Still soft, but not as soft as when it's right here. Now sometimes they're very subtle changes that you get from these, but in a lot of cases, if you have really harsh sun, let's say somebody has to do a photo shoot at one o'clock in the afternoon in the middle of the summer. Well, no big deal, because you have a really strong light source, you just need to modify it. You just need to make sure that you're manipulating that light in a way so that it's still gonna create flattering light. That's a five-in-one reflector. Another thing that I wanted to mention about the black side, hold on one second. If you're outside in that 12 noon sun, right, in the middle of the day, a hot summer day, and maybe someone wants to do some portraits outside in a grassy field, well, what's gonna happen is that light's coming straight down and it's gonna bounce back up what color? That's right, green. Green and skin tones don't really work so well. So one of the other things you can do, whether this negative fill be on the side or in this case, maybe underneath, you're now blocking some of that green light that's gonna be reflecting around your portrait. Granted, I have to get this pretty close to them to block that out, but it will be helpful, especially if it's something as simple as a headshot. Now, obviously I would say we'll try to move them over to a gravel road or somewhere where it's not green, but just know that that's really where this black side can also be helpful. So this is a light shaping tool that again is really affordable and should be in everyone's car or everyone's camera bag. Sometimes you need someone to hold it for you because holding it by yourself can be a little bit tricky. Sometimes what I do like to do is I'll place it behind my head like this, try to balance it with one hand, and then use the other hand to take pictures. Now, if it's windy, this is really hard to do, so ideally you wanna have someone with you. But in a pinch, it will work if you need a little bit of front fill, or negative fill in this case, or just a diffuser. Holding it up above you if the sun is coming directly onto your subject, being able to soften that light can really make a huge, huge difference. So I hope this was helpful for you guys to see. Again, really cheap, really affordable. Play with it, experiment with it. 
everyone should have one or two or three of these, depending upon what size you need. These are really, really great considering their impact and use to cost ratio. So I hope you guys like that. Down and Dirty Tuesday tips. We'll see you next week.